Yo guys, I'm going to be making a little video series on the sculpting and casting and possibly even painting process to produce a replica Captain America First Avenger helmet. Now before I roll into my little slideshow I put together, I'd first like to say that before you start considering this little hobby, it does cost a decent amount of money. So if you can't scrape up about $350, that's how much I spent so far, and that's not even including the respirator and the safety equipment that you need to use. Also, the time I put into it, just the sculpt, was about 50 hours. So if you're working a lot or uh, you've been busy doing stuff or vacationing, like this is hard to keep uh, in perspective because it takes a lot of time. So anyway, the first thing you need is obviously a mannequin head. This is the same one that I bought off of eBay for about 35 bucks. It's a good, sturdy, strong, plastic head. The problem is that the face is tilted up a little bit for use of facial work. To overcome that, I just stuck a book in the back side of the mannequin base. And it basically worked just fine after that. The second thing is obviously clay. I used monster clay. I never used it before, but I love it now. The only problem is it does take a while for you to melt it down and get it consistent enough to use before it gets hard. But anyway, it never dries and it always doesn't expand or shrink or whatever. I think it's great clay and I'll definitely use it again. You only need about one tub. I bought two just in case. So if you're gonna buy it, I'd recommend buying two, but you could probably fit it in with one tub like I did. Thirdly is mineral spirits. Mineral spirits help thin the clay, make it um, soft without adding heat to it. It works very well, especially because I was using sandpaper to do the final smoothing and rounding the mineral spirits will thin the little tiny pieces of monster clay that is sanded and is all around the helmet once you're done sanding. It'll thin it, make a little paste, and then you can just take a paper towel and wipe it off. And mineral spirits worked very well for that since it's an oil base and waxy. All right, fourth, a crock pot, a crock pot a junk crock pot, I bought mine for $3 at a yard sale. It, I don't think crock pots break, so I'm sure you could pretty much buy one anywhere. I don't recommend using one that you eat out of because I'm sure you can't really get the smell of the monster clay away. It has a weird like waxy smell. It's not bad, but it would just taste weird in your food. So just a cheap crock pot would do just fine. And then lastly, some basic tools. These are three, my three main tools that I used. I used a stiff brush, as you see all the way on the left, that I used the back of it to help um, go around the rim and take away little pieces, along with the stiff bristle part, help take away little pieces of monster clay from the sanding. Uh, in the middle, there is a wood carving tool with a 45 degree angle. That really helped carving. I also used an X-Acto knife. You really don't need a sharp tool. It'll just go right through and into the mannequin head. But just anything thin and strong enough to cut clay would just work fine. And then lastly, sandpaper. It basically cost nothing. I only used like a half a sheet for the whole thing. And basically you just sand over the clay and then add some mineral spirits and it just comes so smooth, it's awesome. So to start off, you need to scrape the monster clay into little pieces and if it's too cold, you could just hack it into pieces like you see here. I shoved a cord knife through and cut it about four different pieces. The smaller pieces will melt faster than a, like a big chunk, kind of like small ice melts faster than big ice. You get the 
similarity, kind of. Uh, you stick all the pieces in a crock pot, stick it on low. I don't recommend sticking it on high because you don't really want to risk burning the monster clay. I don't really know if it will burn, but I'm sure it could burn because I know some of the newer crock pots get pretty darn hot. So stick in there for about a half hour on low, maybe an hour until it's liquid. So once you're done with that, please, you can turn it off and wait till it gets to a thicker consistency where you can paste it and stuff. So the most efficient way that I found to cover the head is to roll some little pancakes. I made these pancakes or little saucers about three, three and a half inches in diameter and about a quarter, I think it was a quarter, maybe a third of an inch thick. And so I'd add, I'd make a lot of them and then I'd add some of the melted clay on the head and then I'd paste the little saucers around the, the head touching each other. And then that would make it so there is an even thickness of the helmet around the whole head. So then you could just add the melted clay over top so it seeps down between the cracks and make it one solid piece of clay. You can continue doing that throughout the whole face. Don't worry about the bottom of the cheeks and the mouth because there's no helmet even there, even when you do cut it away. So try not to waste your time on that. The eye holes and behind the ears are critical um, with the thickness. As much as possible, try to stick those little saucers in there. I know it might be hard because they go in pretty far, those eye sockets, but just try to stick them in there because the eye holes for the helmet are a key part of the helmet. After you're done that, work on the nose. The nose is also a key part and try to make it have an even thickness. You don't need to do a little pancake for that. Just try to do it to your best ability. And the nose is on the face, so when you're looking at someone and you have the helmet on, if the nose doesn't look good, chances are your whole helmet doesn't really look good. So try to spend a lot of time on the nose. All right, fill in the back of the ears. The ears are important because the, the cut around the ears, the little hexagon thing for the helmet, that is really critical when you put the little rim around the helmet later on. If you don't have an even thickness and you cut away around the ear, it's not gonna look right. So just try to keep that the even thickness. So continue smoothing out the face. Try to make it as smooth as you can. You can cut away a little excess. Don't cut too far, never cut too far because it's really hard to put clay back to add to thickness and it takes a while. You, of course, can if you want. I don't wanna control that. You guys are basically up to you whatever you wanna do, but that takes a while because you need to make it so the clay is malleable and then you need to put it on and then it needs to dry and the whole process that's kind of a waste of time. So anyway, you can work on the tail of the helmet the tail of the helmet is also a really critical part of the helmet. You make a little tail so you can kind of see where the tail is of the helmet. And actually before I should go into this, make sure you always have a phone or a computer screen or a paper that has the Captain America helmet from the movie on it because the minute you look away from a picture, you're gonna start making up stuff that you think the helmet is like, but it's really not. And I'm not saying this to offend you, but it happens extremely a lot to me. And so, just, just gonna save you guys some time and tell you that now because you'll be surprised how many times you'll do something that you think is right, but it's really not accurate to the Captain America helmet. 
So anyway, mark out the the tail of the helmet and then add a big basically the rest of your clay in a big glob underneath that tail. If you know anything about the silicone and the casting, you need it so the the face and the head is the same di same circumference as the biggest part of the helmet because if not the silicone skin won't come off the helmet it'll kind of be like uh, taking a big rock out of a water balloon and that's kind of hard to do it's hard to explain but yeah so if you look in the back of this picture you see the big glob just make it so if you go around the lips you can reach the same diameter as if you went around the eyes to the back of the head so you start at the glob go around through the lips and around that should have the same circumference as the eyes and around the head so you can cut away little pieces of clay working up towards the eyes remember to always cut into little pieces a lot of little pieces instead of a a little amount of big pieces because big pieces are destined to mess up you cut off the eye holes of course start with little holes and get bigger if you cut big at first the eye holes are really tricky so try to start small and try to reach the pupil and then work out from there then you can start cutting out the tail of the helmet the tail of the helmet is pretty fun along with the face but remember that the tail bevels out so try to make the edge of it kind of face a little more out than directly underneath it you can kind of see the rim is sticking a little faced out of that um, you can cut the the cheek parts of the helmet up higher to its final position and you can cut out the ears the ears just basically all I can tell you for the ears is just pay attention to the Captain America picture now for smoothing before you move on to this step, make sure that the whole helmet is smooth to your best ability with your fingers. So that means all like the may big dents and scratches and gouges are all basically filled in. So once that all happens, you can take a rough sandpaper and go over the whole helmet. You can stick the sandpaper to it and drag. You can pull higher up spots and put it in little, little divots in the helmet and it, it worked way better than I ever thought it would we do that and work on the face um, make sure not to press too hard with the sandpaper or it'll ruin the eye sockets and the edges but if you, even if you do lightly it'll still work very well they could take a sponge brush dip it in mineral spirits and wipe it on the the scored sandpaper marks. The mineral spirits might take a minute or two to kind of thin the clay and then you could take a paper towel and wipe the clay and smooth it out. If you touch it'll be a little wet for a little bit afterwards but it should dry within maybe half hour or so. If you touch your finger to it while it's wet it might make a little divot in the clay so try to avoid that and stick to the paper towel so that's the basic shape of the helmet minus the rim um, try to make the symmetry the best of your ability I only realized all my symmetry problems in the end so I'll get on to that problem a little later right now you're basically ready for the little snake line around the edge of the helmet so to start that you can roll out a little snake I'm gonna call it a snake a little worm thing kinda of like when you're playing with play-doh when you're a little kid but you roll out a little snake and you'll stick it around the edge of the helmet 
Make sure when you go around the ears, those are sharp angles, so don't try to round them off. Make it so the snake is bent in sharp angles, so the ears don't look wrong. Make it as like realistic as possible. Uh, pinch, squish the snake down so it has a flat outer edge, and then curl the bottom over to the edge. It's hard to explain, but it kind of shows it in this picture. There's my thumb, and I'm pulling the bottom up to kind of bond the edge and the side of the snake together into one piece. So I'm gonna. This is a connection piece of the ear. Uh, you overlap it a little bit, and then you can come in with your fingers and exacto knife and flatten it out a little bit, and then cut off the edge that's attached to the helmet, as you can see here. There is the basic shape of the helmet with the edge and rim completed. It's more of a square look instead of a round look, and that's how it is like in the movie. Once your helmet is here, it's gonna start really looking like the helmet, and it gets pretty exciting because it's pretty awesome. You can also take the um, 45 degree angle tool and pull away the clay along from the little edge. You can see the score marks that occurred from that and then you can just dab it with mineral spirits and it'll dissolve and make it smooth again. You could also use a paintbrush and stiff paintbrush and take that away pretty easily. When you're done with that mark out the two lines. This is pretty much the hardest part of the whole helmet. Mark out the two lines that go from the eye to the tail of the helmet. Roll out a monster snake and attach it from about mid-eye to the tail of the helmet. Make sure you're still looking at pictures of your Captain America helmet on your phone or computer because if you don't do this right, you're just gonna have to do it again. So, this is the hardest part right here. I didn't realize how off my symmetry was until about now. This is picture was taken about, oh, maybe four tries trying to fix the symmetry since the last picture. I kept taking off the little snakes and adding more clay and then smoothing it out and sanding it down and doing so much stuff. and. It just wouldn't work. But then it finally clicked at about 11 o'clock at night one day and I got it done. So there's after I fixed the symmetry and I attached the snake to the back rim of the helmet. That little dot to the right is a line of symmetry that I kind of put there just to basic visual line of symmetry. Now it's pretty much the key part of touching up. You can still see the helmet is pretty rough. Take that stiff brush and go around and try to pick as much pieces of little clay off as you can. As you can see the bulk at the bottom is more smooth. And so, finally, my Captain America First Avenger helmet sculpt is now completed. I hope to be out with my next silicone slideshow video in about a week or so. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to post a comment below or even shoot me an email at foodforcaleb at gmail.com.